Hi, everyone. Uh, you'll notice, by the way, there is no review up today. Uh, we, I did go to see, well, I did go to see uh, Escape Room, and I had made about halfway through the movie, but something uh, came up and I had to leave the movie. So there is not going to be a review this week. Uh, so the first review will actually be next week with um, uh, that, uh, oh God, that Brian Cranston, Kevin Hart movie that I can never remember the name of. Point being, though, we're talking about something completely different. We're talking about uh, Ravnica Legion spoilers. It's day two, and boy, do we get a lot of spoilers today. Uh, so let's just start off with, I mean, we got we now have seven of our three guild leaders, two Planeswalkers and um, five actual legendary creatures. Excuse me, uh, five, excuse me. Five, we have um, of the guild champions and guild, uh, guild leaders, we have five, seven out of the ten. Uh, we're missing just right now two guild champions, if I'm not mistaken. We're missing Orzov's Tessia, and we're missing. We got the Rakdos, we got. Uh, and we're missing Gruul, our uh, Rogtar. But anyway, uh, we do have two new guild leaders uh, Rakdos the Showstopper. Or the show, yeah, it's the showstopper. Uh, one red, one black, four of any color for a 6-6 six, six legendary demon mythic rare. Flying trample. When Rakdos the showstopper enters the battlefield, flip a coin for each creature that isn't a demon, devil, or imp. Destroy each creature whose, ca whose coin comes up tails. It's, it's funny because each version of Rakdos has always, I believe, had flying and trample. I actually like the the previous. I do have that previous version of Rakdos, where it's like his pain or his uh, mana cost goes down depending on amount of damage that was done or something like that, or or if damage was done. Uh, but th this one calls back a bit more to his original ability, where when he attacked, you'd, uh, you'd sacrifice half the permanents on the field, non-demon imp or demon to or uh, devil tokens. So it harkens back to that. It is something where it is just a quick effect, but he's always had that ability, more or less, where it's just quick damage and be done with it. The coin flipping's interesting. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. Because th there's scenarios where you're going to at least take out something, and there's scenarios where you might not take out anything. It's very just hit and miss on that regard. So there is that. <clears throat> I will say, though, we have... Um, my favorite guild, uh, Simix Prime Speaker Vanir, uh, Vanifa, Vanifar, uh, V A N N I F A R. So Vanifar, Vanifar, one to green, one blue, and two of any color for a two-four Elf Ooze Mythic Wizard. Again, uh, a, a type I didn't really know I wanted until I saw it. Tap this creature. Sacrifice another creature. Now you search your library for a creature card. Would convert a mana cost equal to one plus the sacrifice creatures converted mana cost. Then you put that card on the battlefield, then shuffle your library and activate this ability only if you could cast a sorcery. I'll be honest, uh, of all the guild masters for the Simic, I think I like Prime Speaker Zagana because I just like big meaty creatures a bit more. But for a mythic creature, basically it's a replacement. You can just keep stacking. If you got a one drop, you'll get a two drop, two drop, three drop, three drop, four drop, so forth, so forth, and so on. Uh, eventually there will, you will hit a wall though with this thing and it's only a two, I mean, it's a two, four, four, four. So it's got enough, uh, uh butt to it that it can take some hits, but it, it's one of those things that I, and hopefully whatever you've sacrificed will be able to, you know, fight on and take on other individuals. Uh, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not loving that one. Um, I'm not loving it. I like it. I do. So if I were to get it in the pre-release, I would probably end up using it. No doubt. I uh, just have to be sure the deck's designed in a way that will handle that. Um, but anyway, so yeah, there's that. Now we, then we have the other mythic for the Orzhov, Seraphin of the Scales. One white, one black, two of any color for a 4-3 angel mythic rare, flying. You can pay a white to give this creature vigilance, or a black to give it death touch. And it has afterlife too, where when a creature dies, you put two 1-1 uh, one, one, one white and black spear creature tokens onto the battlefield. I've heard some people say it's boring, but fine, and that's kind of it. There's nothing amazing about it. It is a 4-3 for 4 with flying, so right off the bat, it's playable. And then you can just give it either Vigilance or Death Touch. Swing in with the Vigilance, uh, you know, keep the Death Touch. A, when it dies, you'll still get two buys. It's just a solid, good card. 
So what if it's not overly interesting? It's a good card overall. Uh, Amplifier. Get it. Uh, two, two red, two of any color for a 1-1 one, one elemental creature. Rare. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Until your next turn, Amplifier's base power becomes twice that card's power and base toughness becomes twice that card's toughness. And put the revealed cards at, on the bottom of your library in a random order. <clears throat> this is interesting. Now, if you only get a one, even if you only pull out a 1-1, one, one, it becomes a 2-2. Two, two. Grants a 2-2 two, two for 4 which with no extra ability, which is not that good. But, oh, I, did, oh, I didn't even see that. So we did get Tessia. Never mind. I didn't even notice that until early. Anyway, we'll get to Tessie in a little bit. Um, but if you get a 2-2, two, two, now you automatically or a, two, a creature with 2 power. You automatically have 4 power on the field then. It does stack very quickly. You also have the added benefit that it's just recycling the card. So you're never actually discarding anything to the graveyard, which is pretty solid. That said, though, you need to give this thing like Menace or Trample or some sort of ability besides what besides just being a vanilla beater because tokens are just going to chump lock that to death. But I can see the possibilities with it so long as you can give it the proper boost in terms of effect. Uh, Tessia Karlov, who I'll admit I completely... Uh, Increasingly at the center of the Orzov web of power. Anyway, I honestly I just didn't know we had gotten her. Uh, Tessia Karlov goes back down to a more reasonable power instead of like the five seven she initially was. She is one black, one white, two of any color, for a two four human artifact um, advisor. If a creature, what the hell? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I haven't heard seen the word dying really used on a, a mag magic card very text very often. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent when you control, or trigger, or to excuse me, if it causes the triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Creatures tokens you control have vigilance and lifelink. That is kind of roughly worded, but essentially, if you were if a trigger ability when the, if a creature dies and an ability is triggered because of it. You immediately double that effect, whatever it may be. With the afterlife, obviously you're getting more than one um, spirit. With something that, like, may, when it dies, maybe you draw a card, you'll draw two cards instead. That sort of thing. Uh, and for what that's worth, she doesn't have any extra abilities herself. But look, even at taking the trigger out, she if you have token strategies, which I do, that in fact do involve white-black, She's going to be great because she's going to give Vigilance and Lifelink those token strategies. So, uh, she's good. Not amazing, mind you. Because the trigger ability, I'm not still not quite grasping the concept of. Um, like, uh, we ha uh, may maybe it's one of those things. Uh, I, I don't know. Because when you have, like, the Biomancer's pet, it, it talks about trigger abilities you have cost two less, but... A trigger ability almost never costs mana usually, so well not oh that's not the case, but you know what I mean. It's generally not a mana ability and a trigger ability. It's just usually a trigger ability. So I don't know. Uh, Scar uh, Scargan Hellkite, two red, three of any color for a four four dragon mythic riot. So it's gruel, which and I'll get to why that's important in a little bit. <clears throat> Flying. You may pay three of any color and one red. This card deals two damage divided as you choose among one or two targets. Activates ability on leaves if this card has a plus one counter on it. See, this, uh, as a mythic, yeah, a lot of people are going to probably use the haste part of the riot more often than not. So you have a four for fly worth haste. So if you need to get that quick damage in, then you'll you'll do it. But at the same time... This is one of those cards that really does reward using the um, plus one counter, making it a 5-5 five, five flying for five, and then you can just start pinging things consistently, get that damage off if you want to activate your spectacle, so forth and so on. Um, uh, so I'm I, – I, I don't know. I'm iffy on that. But what's interesting is, because we'll have another mythic coming up here that's of a different guild – is that this and the next one illustrate w which guilds the respective colors are going to belong to. Um, so basically, so, uh, the Hellkite is a Gruul card. The next one, we're, the black card we're going to talk about in a second, Spawn of Mayhem, is a Rakdos card. 
Uh, so that means the white card, by definition, is going to actually be an Orzhov card, a Mythic Rare. The blue card is going to be an Azorius Mythic Rare. And then the green card should well, theoretically be a Simic Mythic Rare. So we'll see what happens with that. I'm pretty sure I've got that pattern right, though. But Spawn of Mayhem is two black, two of any color for a 4-4 Demon with Spectacle, two black and one of any color. So it's one less, automatically good. Um, flying Trample. So even if you're paying it for the 4, you're getting a 4-4 four, 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 four with Flying and Trample value at the beginning of your upkeep spawn of mayhem deals one damage to each player and then if you have 10 or less life put a plus one counter on spawn of mayhem so this thing is just going to be complete utter value no matter what you're going to be lowering your opponent's life you're going to set off your spectacle you'll already have a flying trample and if by chance your life is lower at, at the beginning of your upkeep than 10 then you're going to just be getting a bigger beat stick each turn so this thing is this thing is nothing but value all day, every day. It has the potential to be bigger than freaking Rakdos, for God's sake. So I really like that card. I mean, if I were in black, I'd want that card, certainly. Uh, Precognitive Perception is two blue, three of any color for an instant rare. Draw three cards. Addendum. If you cast it during your main phase, scry three and then draw three cards. I think it's definitely one of the better Addendum cards. It is five mana, so it's not cheap, but... That said, it is still a solid card. Uh, you're still drawing three cards, and if you decide to play it during your main phase, like if you're up, if you've got some blockers, thropters, whatever, you can immediately scry three and then get it. So, yeah, that's that's not bad. It's not amazing, though, but it's not bad. Ravenger Worm is the Gruul Mythic, apart from Domer. Uh, two green, one red, and three of any color, six mana, for a 4-5 worm creature with riot. So you can either have it come out as a 4-5 with haste or a 5-6. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose up to one. Create, uh, this card fights target creature you don't control. Or destroy target land with an activated ability that isn't a mana ability. That last one is pretty uh, – is an interesting little effect. I'm not certain how I overall feel about it. Because I'd have to see the other lands in the set, really. I just, um, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. It, it's overall a pretty solid, beefy card. Uh, you, especially if you decide to go with the riot part of it, you can fight and then blow something up for five. Or you can go with the haste, still fight, knock maybe one of their smaller creatures out, and then still swing in and be fine. Uh, Bolrak Clan Crusher is one green, one red, three of any color for a 4-4 Ogre Warrior Uncommon. Tap this card, remove a plus one counter from a creature you control, and this card deals one, uh, two damage to any target. Again, activates of the Riot. It can also go hand-in-hand uh, -hand with the Simic effect, too, of Adapt. So, you know, you can consistently, uh, you know, adapt, tap, deal two damage, whatnot. But that being said, truth be told... It's a 4-4, four, four, so you're probably just going to be swinging with a 4-4 four, four most of the time. Still, for the 4-4 four, four with an upside effect, that's not bad. 4-5, uh, that's not bad at all. Uh, depose and Deploy. Depose is one hybrid uh, blue, mo blue and white mono, one of any color for an instant. Target tap target creature and draw a card. That's a solid card. And then the other is Deploy, one blue, one white, two of any color for a instant. Create two 1-1 one, one colors Thopter creature tokens with flying, and then you gain one life for each creature you control. Both of these, both sides of this card are good. The tap is a good little stopper, and you'll get an extra card. And the deploy is just a nice way to buffer up your field and get a little extra life in the process. Both of these are solid cards. I can, use, I would use both of these. Uh, Growth Chamber Guardian. Now. If you look up what this card actually looks like, you'll notice the at least if you go to MTG Salvation, which I'm on, its art is clearly taken from the trailer. It's not the official art right now, I don't think. Pretty sure it's not. Um, anyway, a Growth Chamber Guardian is a one uh, is a two two one green one of any color two mana uh, elf crab warrior. It's the guy you see in the trailer with that crab arms. Two of any color and one green to adapt for two, meaning it would make it a 4-4. Four, four. When one or more plus one plus one counters are put on Growth Chamber Guardian, you can search the library for a, cre for a card named Growth Chamber Guardian and put it into your hand and shuffle. Another basically member of the long line of like Shivan Elf, um, basically play the card and get more copies of that card and bring it out. So it, But still, if you can get it off, it's a 4-4 four, four, basically. 
that will bring out more armies of four fours. I get it from a flavor perspective that they guard the chamber, so you got pretty much an army of these guys. Uh, Wilderness Reclamation. It, overall, I like it, but you need it in, in bulk to make it work. Wilderness Reclamation is one green, three of any color for an enchantment. Uncommon. At the beginning of your end step, untap all lands you control. Again, not an effect that's new, but a solid effect nonetheless. Unless. Uh, end raise for, uh, forerunners. Three green, five of any mana. So eight mana altogether for a seven, seven rare boar. Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. And when it enters the battlefield, all cre other creatures you control get plus two, plus two, Vigilance, and Trample. Jeez, that's, that's a beefy stick, man. That's a beef stick right there. And that's a smash you in the face stick. Vigilance, Haste, and Trample on a 7-7 seven, seven that pumps the entire field for 2-2 two, two with Vigilance and Trample again. That that card goes in just any green deck. Any green deck is lo loving that. But that said, it is a hefty little toll, though. At 8 mana, 3 of it green, that is a lot. That is a lot. <clears throat> but still, good card. Uh, uh, piss, uh, Pestilent Spirit. 1 black, 2 of any color, for a 3-2 Spirit, Menace, and Death Touch. Uh, rare. Instance and sorcery spells you control have death touch. Now this is interesting. I believe we had oh god, how many how long ago was it? Uh, how many sets ago was it? Where we had something that actually did give lifelink to your spells. Now they're incorporating that effect on with death touch. And I'll tell you right now, I, I want to say it was was it Tarkir? I I'm not gonna go and look it up. But I'm just wondering was it Tarkir? I, uh, I, I can't, I can't remember exactly what it was. I want to say it was, but I could be very wrong on that. It was either Tarkir or maybe Zendikar, one of the two. I don't think it was uh, 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 Innistrad though. Uh, second return, or the first return, but still, it, basically adding with Death Touch actually makes it a lot. Well, actually, any amount of damage they would deal to a creature is enough to destroy it. <sighs> Because it's instances of sorceries, I actually have to take that back a bit because I, you're gonna, despite the fact that design wise, I mean, art wise, it looks like it'd be more of an Azorius card. This is better suited for a Rakdos deck because the only cards that really do damage are black, uh, uh, instances of sorcery cards anyway, that do damage are red and black spells. You get a little bit of it in white um, with blocking combat damage and blocking attacks and you know doing damage to attack creatures or block creatures but that's it the reactionary black tends to cause you to lose life not quite as much deal damage but you do get it more often than white red obviously is the one that does damage the most of the time so and then if you're doing damage i mean yeah all you have to do is one to kill something but ultimately it's just uh, uh, high alert is one blue, one white, one of any color for an enchantment uncommon. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Each creature you control with defender can attack as though it didn't have a defender. And you can pay uh, two of any color, one white, one blue, to untap target creature. Look, unless defender is going to be a big thing in this set, uh, which I don't think it is, this is just kind of a meh card. It's not not fantastic. We've had cards like this before, so not not really something I dig on at all. Uh, Carnival and Carnage. Carnival is an instant hybrid red black mana for and again an instant. Carnival deals one damage to target creature and planeswalker and one damage to that creature's controller. So it sets off your spectacle for one mana. Definitely usable. Uh, Carnage is one black, one red, and two of any color for a sorcery uncommon. Deals three damage to target p opponent, and that player discards two cards. So either way, you've got damage-inducing capabilities here. Uh, they have a secondary effect to them as well. One's just extra damage to something they control, whereas um, bah, the other one is pretty much a uh, Blightning, except just a bit beefier. Ultimately, it's they're, they're again both good cards. The uncommons in the set uh, for the split cards are really good so far. We have next up consecrate, uh, consecrate. Am I getting that right? Consecrate, consecrate. Sorry, consecrate and consume. Consecrate is one black hybrid. Oh, excuse me, one hybrid black white mana, one of any color. 
instant exile target card from the graveyard, draw a card. Consume one white, one black, two of any color for a sorcery uncommon. Target player sacrifices a creature with the greater pa or yeah, greatest power among creatures they control, and you gain life equal to that creature's power. Um, both are fine. The exiling the target creature card uh, one that's playing mostly towards Kai's effect. I'm not seeing much use out of that. Honestly, the consume is what you really probably want to play because you'll be able to take out their best um the best creature on the field really and then you can just gain life from that so yeah play the consume if you are somehow using kaya at any way at any point um uh you know do uh you know i guess the exile would be fine uh bellow of the carnium uh carnarium sorry Two black, one of any color for a sorcery, uncommon. All creatures get minus two, minus two until the end of turn. Exile all creature cards in the graveyard that died this turn, and if that creature would be would die this turn, exile it instead. Wait, what? Uh, exile all creature cards in graveyards that died this turn. If a creature would die this turn, exile it instead. So essentially, you're just exiling everything. <laughs> Again, it seems like it's playing. It's clearly. Uh, designed a, or designed at least from an art perspective and from a name perspective as a Rakdos card, but it's more of a – its effect is more aiding uh, Azori or uh, Orzov in this case, so that's odd. Uh, Pitiless Pontiff, one white, one black for a vampire cleric, 2-2. Two, two. Uh, pay one of any color, sacrifice another creature, and this card gains death touch and instructable till the end of turn. Solid little card, especially when you're just sacrificing spirits. Uh, Basilica Bell Haunt, uh, the next in the cycle of the double mana cards, two white, two black. Three, four, spirit, uncommon. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card and you gain three life. It's a good card. It's got no extra effect, but it doesn't need it. It's a good, it, it's fine. You're going to cause your opponent to discard a card and you'll gain three life, so you'll be up. They're going to be down at least a card, so it, it's a good card, ultimately. It's got nice art to it also, the, the nice, uh, the cool white-robed specter. Uh, last but not least for today, we have Gutter Bones, one black, two uh, for a 2-1 Skeletal Warrior, or skele Skeleton Warrior, rare, enters the battlefield tapped. You can pay one black, one of any color. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, or excuse me, return it from your graveyard to your hand, activate its ability only during... Your turn only if an opponent lost life this turn. Again, it's clearly a Rakdos card, just doesn't have the watermark, so I'm a little mm, about it. But anyway, that is all the cards for today that got spoiled. A lot of cards got spoiled, but we're going to get more pretty quick, so keep you know, hold on to your butts, as uh, Samuel L. Jackson would say. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you next time. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, if you want to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review at some point. Ideas for who would win. Star Wars, Severe Magic, what if, anything I do on the channel. Put that in the comments below as well. I'll get to that at some point. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.